guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Courtney. Today I've got a very simple DIY Dollar Tree hack slash tip, whatever you wanna call it. Um, it is a way for you to take any type of design, print out basically anything you can make on the computer in Microsoft Word or some a graphic you might print out from Google and blow it up as big as you want. So I wanted to get this little hack up for you guys because I do have a large scroll canvas wall hanging sign tutorial coming up soon. And I wanted to show you this hack in case you didn't know, because this is one way that you can make that upcoming tutorial sign. So I will show you that very quickly. It's very simple to do um, and you don't need a lot of supplies to get it done. And then finally, at the end of the little tutorial, I do kind of have just a little mini project that I made that I wanted to talk you through. Um, I did have a company and I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Aive. I don't know, I'll put their information down below, reach out to me to see if I wanted to try some of their DIY supplies. And so the one I'm showing you today will give you a flashback to your childhood. I ended up making a cute little sign that I'm gonna be putting in my craft room um, once the renovation is complete, which by the way, if you're not on Facebook, they're coming Saturday to paint, repair, and then I can move in and then the last step will be the floors. So I got bumped up the timeline, so that's exciting. So, all right guys, without further ado, let's get into this quick little hack and then I'll show you the quick little mini project I made um, using a really fun childhood um, product. All right guys, let's go. So for this hack, you're gonna need one of these little shadow box type things. It didn't have a back to it, but Dollar Tree has these out right now. They also have some in turquoise. You could also build your own using a Dollar Tree picture frame and some Jenga blocks, but the main thing is, is you need something that can stand up and can stand on its own. Then basically I'm just gonna kind of show you the concept behind this is whatever your design is on the glass, you're just gonna want to prop it up with some books, shine a light through it, and then here I have a large um, 16 by 20 canvas just taped to the wall to show you. And then of course you would go in and use a pencil to um, stencil out your design and then you can go back and paint. So very quickly, the first thing I'm gonna do is, I didn't actually want this design, so I'm gonna take off the um, sticker here. Now, I did use nail polish this time, but funny enough, it was taking forever to get off. Um, I tried the hair dryer, yeah, it didn't really loosen it either, and I ended up just scratching it with my fingernails. So once the design is off, I will show you how to use the printout to make your design. Once the design was all scratched off, I did just wipe it down with some alcohol, which you will need this as you change your designs. And then what I did was take a printout so that I printed out on the computer, and then I cut it down to size to fit inside the frame. I'm gonna put it on the underneath side of the glass. And once I get it all taped in there, I will take a Sharpie marker and basically trace over the design on top of the glass. Now I'd recommend using a black Sharpie. I did use purple and you'll see it's kind of faint when you put it up on the wall, but I, that's just what I had around me. So like I said, you'll tape this down and then go ahead and trace the design and then pull it off. And once it's all traced in, of course you can see here, I'm just filling in some of this. And again, this was just to show you guys. So you could go back in and fill the letters if you need to, but it's not necessary. Um, but like I said, the purple's kind of faint. It doesn't really matter. You'll still be able to see it in the end, but I probably would recommend using a black. But if you're working with text that's very thin, I would use the thin Sharpies. And then again, here's your setup. You just stack it on top of some books, shine the light through and there it goes. It projects onto the canvas. This is basically essentially an overhead projector for those of you who are a little bit older and know what I'm talking about. And then you can just take a pencil and simply trace your design and then go back and paint it. And easy like that, that is an easy way to blow up any design that you can print on your computer. There you go guys, a quick hack on how you can blow up any design that you make on your computer. Stay tuned to see the little nostalgic sign that I made for my new craft room. All right guys, let me show you this fun little project that took me back to my childhood when I saw it. So this is what you're gonna get um, from, again, I think it's Aive. I, again, I'll put the information down below. It's called Scratch Art Paper. You get 20 pieces of this in the bag, along with four plastic yellow stencils. 
and a package of wooden dowels that have a point. Now, the first piece of paper, when I opened this up, um, did have scratches on it, and it's probably just because of the mail, transport, whatever. So what I did with that page is I just quickly took the stencils and I just stenciled them out. So you can kind of see how many different stencils. I mean, there's weather stencils, there's transportation stencils, there's food, animals, all kinds of stencils here that you could use. And I stenciled it out. So I knew I wanted to make a sign. Um, so what I did is I went to Google and I just found an image and I printed this out. Um, once I printed it out, my initial um, thing that I did, which didn't work, so let me tell you so you don't make the same mistake I did, is I just took, I kind of taped it so it would hold in place and then I set it down on top of the paper and I took a pencil and I just traced the letters thinking that it would put enough pressure to do the outline underneath. When I lifted it up, nothing was there. It didn't scratch it, it didn't make a dent on it, nothing. So what I ended up having to do was take the stencil and take some white chalk and I just sanded it over it, or sanded, I just rubbed over it with white chalk. Again, set it down on top of my paper. Then I went and traced it and sure enough, it left a white chalk outline. And then when I was all done, here we go. Um, I took the little wooden dowel pencil and I went back and I just traced over my white chalk line. I just brushed, you can just wipe the chalk off, no worries. And here is this little sign that'll be a pop of color on my shelves. I just loved it because of the colors. It just reminded me of third grade art. Um, and so what I'm thinking as of now is here's a picture. I put up some Jenga blocks um, around it thinking I would make a frame. And those came from Dollar Tree, of course. And I might paint some of them to coordinate with the picture. I don't know. So we'll have to see. You'll see it in the final review of my classroom, but I just wanted to show you this is a really fun project. I do plan on using this for a summer DIY I have in mind, so you'll see these again later on in a couple of months, but there you go. Something really fun. If you have kids, these are so fun. Um, I just wanted to show you. So I'm very happy with it. Um, I thank Aive for sending it and the other products they sent me. You will be seeing those in some future DIYs that I had planned already. So there you go, guys. Very quick little sign that I made. So I hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Until next time. Bye.